Hey everybody, this is Dr. Daniel Choi here from North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth and Denture Implant Center. And I wanted to make a video talking about the steps of a snap and denture. You've decided to go this route, so I'll basically detail the steps from your initial consultation to when it finally snaps in your mouth. See, it sticks in pretty good there. Um, all right, so before I start the video, if you can follow me on my YouTube channel, that would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. All right. So you've made the decision to do a snap indenture and you're basically wondering, all right, so what are all the necessary steps that are involved with it, right? So um, first step, you're going to have to go in for a consultation to the guy that you're interested in, to, whether it's a uh, dentist, surgeon, um, and they'll basically go over your scan, your x-rays, basically what your expectations are, how many implants, all that type of the cost, all that stuff. So that's where you're going to get your initial information. All right, so let's go into a little bit more detail with that. So things to be looking out for. Um, a lot of times when you go to an office, you're familiar with seeing this right here. This is a panoramic 2D x-ray. So here we specifically have a patient who um, we did an implant denture on. He um, was severe case of periodontal disease, severe bone loss, you know, in uh, 54 years old, sick and tired of facing this condition and just going to the dentist and having this situation. Um, so he said, you know what, let's get these teeth out, let's do an implant denture. So. Um, just wanted to let you know, one of the specifics about having a, you know, a scan like that is a 2D panoramic scan is great, but what's even better is a 3D scan. Okay, so um, with me, everything I know, I place thousands of dental implants, done tons of these types of cases. Um, if you're doing any sort of implant denture in my mouth, we absolutely need to have a 3D scan, okay? The 3D scan basically tells me the morphology of your bone, um, where you might have excess bone, where you don't have enough bone, arteries, vessels, nerves all this detailed information and also the morphology of the bone really tells me help uh, helps me plan like kind of like the angulation of the implants and all these little details that prove to be very necessary when you're going to go ahead and um, pr uh, place your dental implants for you so you definitely want to make sure that um, you have that 3d scan in fact if they don't have that 3d scan um, as a dental surgeon placing dental implants for somebody for something like that, you know, they're not serious about what they do. So again, make sure you have that 3D scan in your consultation. So what else are they gonna talk about they're gonna talk about at that appointment? Well, they're gonna also be preparing for your denture, right? So um, we can't just make these, we don't have a box of these just sitting in a closet and they're just not one size fits all. These have to be custom fit for your mouth. So you know at that appointment the consultation, if you decide to go ahead with this, then they're basically gonna get the molds of your teeth. Okay, so you know, at that when they're deciding uh, when they get the molds of the teeth, they also discuss all right, what kind of um, teeth do I want? What shade uh, teeth do I want? Like, do I want whiter ones? What shape? Because I can get more squarish or more ovoid teeth, you know, because there's differences in the shape of the teeth and all these things. So, there's little details um, that you need to plan out with your dentist because you know, we want you to be happy with uh, the denture that we send you home with after your surgery. So um, and I also wanted to show you um, with this specific case. Here's a denture that a patient came in to our office with. Um, their dentist had done a denture like um, like this for them. And now this was an elderly gentleman. And you know, I asked him if he was happy with it. He didn't seem to mind too much. But you know, when I look at a case like this, you know, to me again, it's very important that you go to a dentist that's going to um, you know talk to you and uh, ask you what your preferences are about you know, teeth, shades, colors, all these things, finish of the denture, because I hate to say it, but this is just a poorly made, a poor quality denture. And if you're gonna be going around with something like this for the rest of your life, or even like for a few months, we wanna make sure it looks good. So um, actually just letting you know that there is a difference with a lot of dentists in regards to what the quality of your, you know, denture is gonna be like. So just keep that in mind. All right, so basically um, they'll plan all that out and also obviously they'll go over the finances with you at that consultation and the fina uh, finances and also potential financing, scheduling of your surgery. So medical health history review, those are all the things to be considering um, during the consultation if you're deciding to go ahead with a, like a snap on denture or snap in denture. All right, so the second major appointment would be the surgery all right so the surgery basically you're going to be going in um, your surgeon's going to sedate you 
Um, now, I have other videos talking about this, like, you know, you have the option of oral sedation, which is just pills, which I wouldn't recommend because it's not very predictable, not as safe. Um, in general, patients aren't usually as satisfied with that. And then the other option is going to be IV sedation, where it is, you know, they start an IV on you, where it's quick, easy access for medications, reversal medications, much safer, and also much easier to get you to a certain level of sedation. So you're going to be a lot happier with that. So, um, so obviously the meat of the surgery is getting those dental implants placed, right? So um, here's, there's two different variations of this type of surgery though. So we have patients that if you're already missing your teeth and you're already in a denture and you hated your denture and that's why you're getting a snap on denture, then you already have your teeth missing, right? So, um, you know, what they do is they'll put you to sleep, you know, um, numb you up, open up your gums and place your dental implants in you. Then they'll stitch you back up and they'll send you home with your newly made denture. Okay. So now this is not going to be snapping in place. Okay. Because while your implants are healing, it's very important that they heal undisturbed because if they have that snapping parts on there and it's snapping and snapping off snapping and snapping, snapping off it's going to cause your denture to fail so um, just think you know if we if we um, during that process of healing about three four months we're, uh, for your dental implants would you put a post in wet concrete and start you know building on it immediately before the concrete is set no absolutely not you want to let that heal now um, you know as opposed to that person that was already missing their teeth, we are going to have patients that have, just like in my previous example on that x-ray, we have patients that have um, bad teeth and they need to get those teeth extracted. So then what we'll do is we'll take out the teeth, we'll clean out all the infection, we'll smooth out that bone, and then we'll place your dental implants, add necessary bone, you know, if you need any bone. Some people do, some people don't. And then we will stitch you up. And then again, same thing, we'll let you heal. During that healing time you'll wear the denture okay so now i had a patient of mine told me years ago when i first started practice um, coming out of residency he was like what's this like 2011 he told me when you um when you practice i have a piece of advice for you under promise and over deliver and you're gonna have a great career so this is where i'm gonna under promise and over deliver all right so when you're wearing this this temporary denture for that four months three to four months i don't let you know this one's going to drive you nuts, okay? But one day you will appreciate the fact when you do have a snap and click in click-in denture because you're like, man, you know, that thing just was terrible, like flopping around, all that type of stuff. It's not so bad for a patient that's already been missing their teeth and wearing a denture. But if you're that patient that had to get teeth extracted, get their bones smoothed out, then get their dental implants placed, that's going to be rough adjusting for you to this okay so you know again i've done tons of these over the years patients are always going to complain afterwards during the healing time they're like oh man i can't wait till this denture is like the implants have healed up because i can get that like that snap in denture so i just want to again lay expectations in regards to what to expect during that healing time you're going to be frustrated by this okay another thing that i want you to be very clear of and understand about that surgical procedure the most 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 important thing that you need to make sure that your dental surgeon does for you is that he's well versed and experienced in placing dental implants because those dental implants need to be as parallel as possible to each other. If these dental implants, these little like attachments are coming out, if you don't have parallel implants and they're all coming out at different angles, this snap-in part, when it snaps into the denture, if the angulations are all incorrect, then it's gonna make it very difficult for the snap indenture to fit properly. I mean, without going all the details in this and making this a 20 minute video, um, if those implants aren't placed correctly, it's gonna cause a lot of issues. And actually, let me find an example here for you. So quick story, I had this patient that came to me, um, I think it was like November, December, 2019. And he came in for a consultation because he told me the story. He went to his dentist, he got some implants placed. He landed in the emergency room about 24 hours, had a pretty severe infection, and the problem is that he paid $20,000 for a snap indenture for upper lower, and he couldn't get it to fit, and so he didn't know what was going on. He researched, did a little research on the internet, found me. So um, I'll show you his uh, scan right here. So he comes in, and these are his dental implants. Number one, these are these are like the temporary mini implants, so I have no idea what the heck was going on here in regards to why he placed these for this patient for a snap-on denture. Um, this was supposed, these are sp supposed to be temporary implants. Um, this guy placed it as a temporary, I mean, as a permanent prosthesis. Um, the angulations were off, the denture would not sit properly, so and definitely the no bone contouring had occurred. Um, and so 
um, with severe infections. So then the patient ended up getting these implants removed for free by that same dentist. And then he, you know, I never saw him afterwards, but like he last consulted with me, but unfortunately he ended up spending $20,000 with this dentist and wasn't refunded it back. And so therefore he didn't have any more money to proceed treatment. So it felt really bad for that guy. So just letting you know where things can go really wrong with certain cases like this. But um, back to my main point, again, it's very important that your dental surgeon places these implants as parallel as possible to each other because if those aren't parallel, this, this snap-in prosthesis later on is gonna be a big problem. And um, these locator attachments and how often they're gonna be replaced, that's gonna have an impact on that too. So um, just wanna let you know about that. So the next phase. So during that healing phase, it's called osseointegration where the dental implant's actually healing with your bone. For lower jaw bones, about three months. Upper jaw bones, about four months. You wanna let those implants which are buried in your bone, you wanna let them heal undisturbed. So during that time, you're gonna go in and see your dentist and he's gonna take x-rays, make sure that those implants are healing okay. And so when we're taking x-rays, we can look at the x-rays and we could see if there's bone loss or if there's any initial signs of there any, being any issues. Now, um, if there's bone loss, then you kind of got to monitor it and you say, how do we need to start over? Because, you know, do you want to start building a home on a cracked foundation? You know, you probably want to make sure that that foundation is like going to be really good, right? So that's why it's really important to watch the healing during those first few months to make sure those implants are going to be viable for the long haul, for the rest of your life. You're making a big investment. So again, you're going to keep on making follow-ups. So You'll come in like every month or two to during those follow-up appointments to make sure, again, the implants are healing okay. All right. So now you're coming to the final stage, right? So you've healed up for like, you know, let's say four months, and now you're going back to your dentist. So what he's gonna do is, he's actually going to have to numb you up again, make an incision in your gums, and then your dental implants, which are buried in your bone, um, he's gonna put little attachments on um, that are protruding through your gums, kind of like these attachments coming out of here. You're gonna heal for a few weeks, and then he'll begin the process of doing your final click on denture. Okay, so snap on denture. So he'll begin the final process. And so here's something that I, that's very important that I want you guys to understand. So you guys have an option of using your pre existing denture to like use that and start putting these little attachments on the underside. Or you can get a new denture made at that around, you know, the four month mark or whatever. Here's my advice for you guys get a new denture made. The reason is that during that healing time, there's going to be a significant amount of changes in your bone. Because after you get the teeth out, your bone changes dimensions significantly. So, you know, if you were to get like a custom foot, like, a, you know, orthotic, like a custom made shoe, even um, when your foot is very swollen. And then like, you know, three months later, if your foot wasn't as swollen as much and the foot shrank, then that shoe's like dimension is going to change significantly. So you want to get a new shoe made at that point versus let's say sticking a bunch of filling into that shoe and trying to get, get it to fit on my shrunken foot, you know? So same thing happens with your bone. Your bone changes significantly in dimension and actually shrinks um, up to that point, usually about the, you know, the four to six month mark. So at that time when it's not like, you know, changing in dimension as much, if you got a new custom made denture, then it's going to fit the best, okay? Now you don't have to get a new one, um, but if it's my mouth, I'm definitely gonna get a new one. Now, if you don't get a new one, you could save a few hundred bucks. Um, and again, in, in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't do that. You know, I would, uh, again, like spend a little bit extra money, get a new one. But it, you know, this is your money, this is, you know, the, your personal decision. Now, if you've already been missing your teeth all these years, and then you just had a few dental implants placed, then it doesn't really change anything. Your bone didn't change dimension. So you can actually use your pre-existing one, so long as it's not, worn down if you had a denture that's 10 years old and it's worn down that the, it's all discolored and the teeth are breaking then yeah you know get a new one but i mean if you had a denture made a year or two years ago and it looks great and you feel like it's you know you're you know you're you're happy with it then absolutely just get the um you know the bottom of it customized so it's easy to get you know have that taken care of so that's my take on that but get a new one made if possible but again it will cost you a few extra hundred bucks now um that's basically, again, the final stages of where they're going to be, you know, customizing this. There's a few appointments where, you know, they'll um, want to basically customize these attachments with the underside of your dentures. So that's pretty much basically the, the bottom line with like all the steps that are necessary for getting your, your custom snap in dentures. So hopefully you guys found that information helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. 
Um, but thanks, and again, hopefully you guys found that information helpful.